In this video, let's take a look at uh, comparing two distributions, two or more. Um, so here I've got three box plots, but I think I'm going to just compare two of them, just so we don't get overwhelmed. Now I want to indicate that comparing two box plots, if that's how you are presented with the information, the data, it's useful for comparing two or more distributions and indicating outliers. Um, they're not that useful for indicating the shape, and part of the reason is because we, we lose information about individual data values. We can't see peaks. We can't see modes. Um, so shape is something that we can't say a whole lot about unless it's a real obvious skew, um, or we could say symmetric. Those are about the only things we can words we can really use. When you're comparing, we want to compare shapes to the best that we can, you know, again, using just words like symmetric or skewed, compare medians, which we can get from box plots, IQRs, and then potential outliers if we, uh, if we think there could be outliers. Okay, so I have this data I got from Wikipedia um, on three very, very um, famous soccer players, uh, and I think I'm going to ignore Maradona. Maradona is the top one. I'm just going to see if I can compare Ronaldo with Messi. So the overall question is who has who has had the best career so far. So again, let, let's just compare, um, talk about their shapes and then their medians and their IQRs and see what we can come up with in terms of a conclusion here. So first I would notice that the, the data is pretty for both Ronaldo and for Messi. Those distributions are pretty symmetric, right? It doesn't really look like there's a really long whisker on either end for, for both. So I might indicate that um, the distributions for Ronaldo and Messi are both pretty they're both fairly symmetric okay so what does that mean well it basically means that there's a little bit there's some consistency with in terms of the number of goals each of them has scored if we saw a really long whisker on either end that might suggest that we have a kind of a un, some unusually unusually good seasons or unusually bad seasons um, but they're both pretty symmetric um, looks like the medians are pretty close but Messi has a higher median so I'm going to say that um, the median number of goals season for Messi, and we can quantify this a little bit. It looks like his is about, like, let's say 42, 42 goals, and Ronaldo's is about, like, 37. So that's, like, a difference of five. I might say the median number of goals per season for Messi is about five more than that of Ronaldo. Okay, so I've compared so far the shapes. I've talked about the centers. Let's talk about the spread a little bit. Um, let's talk about the interquartile range uh, for both. So the IQR for Ronaldo, well, again, we have to estimate a little bit. His goes from maybe about 12 to like 52, I might say. So that's about that's a difference of about 40. Right, so I'm going to just indicate that's an estimate of 40 goals. So the IQR for Ronaldo is about 40 goals, and for Messi, his goes from this looks like it's like let's say 17, and it goes up to about let's just zoom in here a little bit. 17 and it goes up to roughly maybe 54. So if you do that subtraction, 54 minus 17 is 37. So 
So I'll indicate that. So the IQR for for Messi is a little slightly smaller. Um, the ranges, we might as well talk about the ranges too, because that's that's kind of important. It kind of indicates the best and the worst season for both. So Ronaldo's range. So his you know, the, the, the best season he's had so far is at about 61 goals, and he had a season with zero goals. So Ronaldo's range is 61 goals, whereas um, Messi's his is a little higher. He had a really good season. He looks like he had like a high of 70, maybe 73, and a low of maybe 1. So his is Messi's range is um, 73 minus 71, so that's about 70, um, 72 goals. Okay, so Messi had a high, Messi had a particular season, he had a really good season that was better than, you know, Ronaldo's best season. Okay, so I've talked about the uh, shapes, I've talked about the medians, the interquartile ranges. I don't know that there we can say much about outliers in this case. We could say maybe Messi's you know, season with, uh, in which he got 73 goals. Maybe that's an outlier. Um, that's, we don't, sure, we don't really know. So if there aren't any, you know, if there aren't any unusual features that you can mention, then you don't necessarily have to comment. But, um, I might just say it's unclear whether any of these seasons are outliers. So we've touched on all all the important things. It's kind of this is a hard comparison to make, and and you know I might just indicate you know my vote I might be for Messi only because he has a higher median, and he is he has one season in particular that was um, that was higher than uh, you know his best season was higher than Ronaldo's best season. So I mean how much do those facts weigh? Again, it's a little bit subjective. Which is why I try to stick a little bit to the just the the objective facts from this these distributions. Um, so who had the best career? Well, again, if we had to make a call, I might say Messi seems to be inching or seems to have been inching out, you know, Ronaldo, uh, at least for his club. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. Anyone who's a Real Madrid fan, I should indicate these are just their club teams. Um, but again, this was just an exercise in comparing distributions and. Again, to indicate, we've noted the um, the shape. We've noted their medians or centers, um, and we've compared them. We've indicated the spread using IQR, but also the ranges. And there weren't any unusual features, so we kind of just indicated that. At least we can't tell if there are any unusual features. So that's an example of how you could compare two distributions if your distributions are box plots.